Jack, I have a great idea. What if we put on a play about us? Leo, what are you talking about? Now listen, Florence Snyder of York, Pennsylvania is about to die and leaving her fortune to her nephews, Max and Steve. So we'd be your nephews. Alright, go on. But here's the trick. They're not nephews. They're nieces! Two girls? No, no. I will not dress up as a woman, ever. I don't do that. Marvelous! I hate you. So and so had a no good hound. Why don't you get lost? You'd be better off laying near the ground. These are your weekly announcements. I'm Luke Bobbitt. And I'm Briley Beck. The senior shirt for November is now available to order. Orders can be made today and tomorrow. Short sleeve shirts are $7 and long sleeve shirts are $8. To place an order, contact Bernice Matarino, Jennifer Wendt, or Matt McMullen. Now, here's Heaven Hudson and Dylan Noblet with a recap on last week's student council meeting. Here's a quick recap of the student council meeting that happened yesterday morning. For more, here's Jennifer Wendt. This is a President's Council meeting, so it's not necessarily like a student council meeting, but it's a lot similar in some ways. Um, we just gather all the presidents, and they basically give feedback on school projects, or they talk about their own school projects that they want to implement. Um, this week we talked about the FBLA icicles and bicycles campaign that they do, um, that they did last year and they're going to do this year. And then we talked about school cleanliness project. Um, we talked about senior shirts headed by the senior class president. And we talked about um, SAD's campaign called Lights Out. And that's really, that sounds like a really cool project. So more details will follow on all of those projects. And the school should be expecting to see them put in place pretty soon. We discussed the planning of an Adopt a Hallway project. It's similar to the idea of an Adopt a Highway project that a lot of big name businesses do, you know, in real life. Um, but we want to implement that's called Adopt a Hallway. Implement something that's called Adopt a Hallway. And what it'll be is each club will be in charge of a certain hallway and keeping that hallway clean. That way we can um, spread cleanliness throughout the school and really promote that and school pride. So that's what we're wanting to do. And remember, we have an extremely nice school, so don't just leave trash laying around. Thanks, guys. Friday, November 20th is Cappuccino Day at JoJo's. All drinks will be half price. Cappuccino will be 75 cents and slushies will be 50 cents. Now with a story from FFA, here's Ian Bruden. FFA went to a convention last week to share ideas and learn about other FFA members' ideas. The students got to go and travel to Louisville and some of the things they learned were leadership skills, teamwork, um, work ethic. Some of our students had the opportunity to be part of the courtesy corps and they got to observe some of the various teams from the 50 different states as well as Puerto Rico that participated in the national livestock competition. So they got to see that the hard work and dedication of those students uh, paid off in the end. Some of the highlights of this year's National FFA convention was students got to go to the general sessions and listen to guest speakers um, where they talked to the, the, the delegates along with the rest of the members on amplifying their FFA experiences as well as their local communities. Um, by providing and participating in various activities. The students got to go to various agriculture tours where they got to look and look and see at different agriculture experiences that we may not have here in southwest Missouri or Joplin, Missouri, in addition to um, experiencing a, a concert and meeting members from across the country that kind of have the same interests and goals as one. I think for a lot of us teachers it's uh, a time where we kind of get recharged through the fall. Um, it motivates us by visiting with other ag teachers from across the country, allowing us to collaborate, gain more knowledge, experience, um, learn from others' interests, and it kind of motivates us to get ready for our spring CDE competitions as well as getting our kids their state proficiencies and state FFA degrees. 
With Jet HD, I'm Ian Bruton. Thanks, Ian. The winter session of Speed School begins Monday. Speed School is Monday through Thursday from 4 to 5 p.m. Students with 90% attendance during the winter session will receive a t-shirt and have their picture hung in the weight room. See Coach Lawrence for details. The drama department show Leading Ladies premieres this week. Here's Amy Neuendorf with more information. The JHS Drama Department is opening their show Leading Ladies on Thursday the 12th. It also shows on Friday the 13th and Saturday the 14th, all at 7 o'clock. It's $5 for students and $7 for anybody else. I got an interview with Zoe Music, the stage manager, who was able to give me more information on the show. My name is Zoe Music and I am the stage manager. Um, as a stage manager, I basically take care of things backstage. I get the, the scenes changed quickly and quietly and sometimes safely. The play is Leading Ladies by Ken Ludwig and it is about two Shakespearean actors who are looking for money and they see an ad in the newspaper about an old woman looking for their, her long lost nephews. So they decide to take her up on that offer and get her inheritance once she dies. So they show up and they're like, oh, it's us. But then they realize that they read the newspaper wrong and it was really her nieces. So they end up pretending to be her nieces to get this fortune and there's a lot of uh, fun to ensue. This is the drama department's second show in the Performing Arts Center. They are very excited and encourage you to go see the show. Just remember that this is more of an adult show than a, than a children's show. I'm Luke Bobbitt and in the play I'm playing Jack Gable who is a British actor who has a best friend named Leo and they go along doing some pretty crazy schemes and Leo just, or Jack just kind of goes along with whatever Leo says. How long do we usually work on the fall play? It's normally about a month and a half we usually work on it and it's anywhere from two to four hours after school. It just kind of depends on the day. Normally the first week or so we just read, read through the play and get some blocking down and mark the different uh, scenes and acts that we have and then we slowly get up on stage and start running lines. Normally we just run like sections of the play, not the entire play all the way through. Am I excited? I'm really excited. It's going to be really fun. I'm going to have a great time. You should definitely come see the show because it's going to be super great and there's a lot of good actors and it's supposed to be really, really funny. Well, it's going to be really, really funny. And it's just going to be a good time. It's not that expensive. It's going on for three days, so you should definitely come if you can. It'll be great. The next day just play will be the 35-minute children's show, The Wizard of Oz. It will show on December 12th for the public. I'm Amy Anundorf with Jet HD. Thanks, Amy. The next FCCLA meeting will be Wednesday, November 18th in room D114 at 3.45 p.m. And FCCLA members need to see Miss Livingston today to pick up a fundraising paper. Skills USA held some events er earlier this week. With more, here's Dylan Noblet. Two days ago, Skills USA held a special event to help further the leadership skills for the students of Franklin Tech. I was able to get an interview with Joey Baker, the Skills USA State Director, who has more on the subject. Uh, so we're teaching uh, the students here that they, they really have a story and a voice to be told. So whether it be their personal story or a, a story of success in their life, uh, people really want to hear from them and, and their, their voice has power behind it. The lessons that were taught at the event were everyone has a different story, customer service, job employment, workplace culture, value of work, and the power of one. Yeah, so one of the seven components of the SkillsUSA program of work is professional development. So the SkillsUSA members here at Franklin Technology Center are going through professional development sessions to really hone their professional leadership development skills that, that are required to get and, and keep the job that they're desiring. I was also able to get an interview with Elizabeth Fowler to get her opinion on the event. I think it will help prepare people for the future and what to expect going into a career path and what they need to know. Let it be said that anyone in Skills USA comes out with a set of skills that set them apart from everyone else in the workplace. So hurry up and join. See Mrs. Anderson for more details. I'm Dylan Lovett with Jet HD. Thanks, Dylan. FCCLA members are selling homemade cinnamon rolls. There are eight large cinnamon rolls per pan. Cinnamon rolls are fully cooked and ready to eat. Buying in bulk for the holidays, cinnamon rolls can be placed in the freezer and thawed for later use. Each pan of cinnamon rolls are $10 each. Deliveries will be made Monday, November 23rd, and Tuesday, November 24th. Be sure to see an FCCLA member to order a pan. Now here's Dylan Noblet and Ian Bruton with their movie review. seem to want to accept the fact that you're dealing with an expert in guerrilla warfare. 
Are you telling me that 200 men against your boy is a no-win situation for us? You send that money, don't forget one thing. A good supply of body bags. Sylvester Stallone. This time, he's fighting for his life. First Blood. Thanks, guys. And for this week on A Plus Reviews, we take a look at one of the best movies of all time, First Blood. This time, we're not alone. Allow us to introduce our guest, Kyler Saner. Yee! Hey, guys. Well, let's not delay. Let's get on with this review. If you don't know anything about this movie, what have you been doing with your life? First Blood follows John Rumble, played by Sylvester Stallone, a Vietnam veteran who has just returned from the war with no one by his side. He gets into trouble with the local sheriff's department and to the point where he gets arrested and abused in jail by one specific officer. Things go south and Rambo has to defend for himself. This movie is first on an A plus review since First Blood was a book adaptation. Yeah, bet you didn't know that. There are some major differences in the movie. Probably the biggest difference is that in the movie, Rambo doesn't actually kill anyone. He only inadvertently kills one officer and trust me, you won't like him. In the book, Rambo kills almost everyone, including civilians, except for the sheriff, as a way to taunt him. He's almost uh, really sensitive in the movie as well, so much so that the ending is entirely different from the book. If you want, search around on YouTube for a bit and you could run into the alternate ending, but be sure to see the movie first. Now for a quick summary of everything good in the movie. Stallone's acting is at its peak and is dripping with emotion. He's quiet for most of the film, but that only builds mystery within the character. Lastly, the one bad thing about the film could be that the sheriff takes this whole ordeal a bit too far. I can understand his reason for being invested, but I doubt that any sheriff could get about 100 soldiers, M60s, and rocket launchers to go after one guy who is already out of ammo. First Blood comes out with an A-90%. minus it gets, it gets there for being one of the first films to maturely show the hardships the Vietnam veterans had to go through when they got, when they got home. Even if they do exaggerate the punishments just a little bit. Don't worry though. If we get to the sequels, we will cover those travesties a bit more. I'm Dylan Oblett. And I'm Ian Bruton. And I'm Kyler Sainer. And class is dismissed. Thanks guys. The Joplin High School Jazz Ensemble will be performing an evening of jazz Thursday, November 19th at 7 p.m. in the Coulter Auditorium. The Jazz Ensemble will be performing selections from the composers such as Sammy Nestico, Duke Ellington, Victor Young, and Oscar Hammerstein. Bring your friends and family and come out and enjoy the JHS Ensemble for an evening of jazz. That actually sounds really fun. Yeah. These have been your weekly announcements. Have a great week.